President, Provost, colleagues, friends, uh, I'm very happy to be here in the happiest country in the world. <laughs> However, 10 years ago, I was standing in front of an audience, just like I am now, talking about a project I'd been engaged on with a team for two years. We were in a working men's and women's club in a community um, of about 17,000 uh, inhabitants um, in the city of Leeds. And we'd done a study of the uh, availability of green space for growing food. We'd done a photographic project in which we uh, showed the lives of ordinary people and the skills that they had. We looked into storytelling, people telling them us about their backgrounds, how their lives had changed living in that community. We did historical research where we mapped changing business patterns, the way in which the high street of this community had changed since the 1920s. We mapped the social relationships between people and between uh, organizations and between uh, different stakeholders in the community. And every two months, we went back to this community with this information, what we'd uh, discovered, and shared it back to them in the hope that they could take that information and use it themselves to build a more resilient and stable kind of community in the face of rapid economic and environmental uh, changes and challenges. Now, you'd think that they would be on the edge of their seats, utterly engaged in learning more about what was on their own doorstep. But let's have a look at them. So what's going on here? <laughs> this is something I want to uh, explore in this uh, lecture, which I call Doing Design Research in Public. How do we de develop design methods to engage uh, with multiple stakeholders? But I think my talk might have some resonances or some import uh, for other fields of research as well. At least I hope so. Now, doing design research in, in public is a very different kind of activity than doing ordinary um, commercial design uh, practice or design research. So in commercial practice, largely speaking, um, and in design re research directed it to that uh, area, firstly, you're dealing very much with a private uh, uh, client and very much working much more within private in which questions of things like uh, intellectual property uh, are important. Secondly, you're thinking about a particular kind of user group. Thirdly, you're thinking about the serial reproduction of something. You're creating a singular prototype which will then be manufactured or printed or serially multiplied uh, in other ways. And you're also directed uh, towards the fashioning of a specific product space uh, experience or something. Now, in this context, it's very different. First of all, we're doing the research actually in public. We're showing it happening in front of perhaps end users, multiple uh, stakeholders, uh, lots of different people. And so we're engaging at lots of different levels with different uh, groups and citizens and so on. Thirdly, we're working at scale. In other words, the research we're doing for example, in this case, working in a community of 17,000 in an area of about uh, six square uh, kilometers is happening in that space and is for that space, not for the idea of moving out, out of that space. And fourthly, we're talking about process. We're, we're designing a process much more than an end product. We're designing a way of working. Now, this way of working um, indeed has a long pedigree, and it starts with the participatory design uh, movement, which was uh, very much developed in Nordic countries, particularly in Sweden. But a very important event which took place uh, here in Helsinki, 1968, um, uh, where Viktor Papanek, the great uh, pioneer of participatory design and uh, social design, held a uh, workshop, which was very much a watershed for thinking in this field, so 50 years ago. And indeed, the person who invited him to give that workshop was Irio Sotoma, 
who was one of the uh, founders of this very university. Now, since then, we have had related uh, forms of design, co-design, co-creation, co-production. But in those 50 years since Victor Papanek's uh, um, workshop here in Helsinki, much has changed. We've seen huge societal change where we may not be talking about singular public, but, si but multiple publics in society. We, we have to think these days, uh, okay, in terms of old social, in terms of uh, the society underpinned by things like the welfare state and the, and the social contract, but we also have to think about our lives as being part of this new social, the social of social media and social networking. In governance, uh, we find uh, municipalities and regional governments and national governments working at so many more uh, uh, levels and with so much, much more complex uh, kinds of spaces in which jurisdictions, for example, overlap in much more uh, complex ways. So coming back to that project uh, I introduced uh, in, th in this in that case, we, are, we were working not just with the uh, city council, but with uh, health promotion groups, uh, with religious organizations, with enterprise promoters, uh, with youth workers, religious groups, uh, schools. And so this pr presents a highly complex landscape within which uh, uh, one is working. And indeed, a highly complex room within uh, which I was trying to present the uh, research itself. So since then, I've spent some, not all, but some of my research time trying to work out what went wrong in that room and how, to, how might we produce uh, new forms of uh, thinking about and doing uh, design uh, research to address these kinds of complexities. So part of that has been uh, pr uh, prototyping through actual projects in public, ways of working which really push the boundaries of the kinds of work uh, one might do uh, here. So to give you one example, this is a project which I curated, um, uh, which was a group of research, of academic researchers working with uh, activists and managers in co-housing. And they took the idea of, uh, what if we took th the concept of uh, hitchhiking into co-housing in the same way that you might take the concept of hitchhiking into healthcare? What would it be like to hitchhike into co healthcare? What would it be like to hitchhike into co-housing? So if you think about it, hitchhiking involves someone with a need, someone with a resource, and an infrastructure between those two. So what if you took those three things and transposed them into another kind of uh, context. So within this, we, are trying to, we were trying to surface the different share, uh, stakeholder expectations of doing this research. Because different publics, different stakeholders, different people who are perhaps outside academic research have different speeds of, of thinking about development, have different bureauc bureaucratic accountabilities, different funding mechanisms, uh, and so on. And out of this, my colleague Lucy Kimball and myself have developed this concept of mode three, two-stage uh, research. Now, if we think of mode one research, this tends to be the dominant form of research in the social sciences and the arts and humanities, doing research about uh, what is actually already there, doing research about actuality or what has been. Now, in mode two research, there's perhaps the ambition that an understanding of the world as it is might lead to us reimagining it, might lead to change, might lead to discovering new potentialities. But that is a kind of quite a sort of haphazard um, approach. It's doing research in the hope of uh, change rather than with, uh, with a uh, more explicit intention of, ch of change. So we've developed this notion of mode three research within which research and change are happening in a very intensive uh, space. And in this space, 
you have to think, well, what's going to happen in that space? What's going to happen when we bring these various stakeholders with their different interests and different priorities into contact with university researchers? So we developed this um, concept of two-stage research. It's about leaving behind the notion that the research questions, the research methods, um, the kinds of collaborations uh, one's going to proceed with are preformed before doing the research. In stage one, we think about actually defining these and experimenting with these and discovering these things within the research process itself. So part of that is about bringing different stakeholders together and really understanding the socio-material practices they're engaged with. What kind of things do they do? What kinds of objects and ways of uh, envisioning their lives and their futures do they work with? And how are they different from ours? It's about then perhaps establishing who might be other collaborators, what may be further questions, what kind of multiple narratives are there in their lives, in their professions, and in the, uh, the aims to which they are uh, working. So it's very important for us to think about these things as part of the research process itself, not coming before. In the second stage of the research, Yes, we go ahead and do the research that we might have um, uh, formed within stage one, but also there's a continuous reworking of the, of the research processes, of the research questions, and even the continuous uh, thinking about pulling in other kinds of collaborators. So we're looking at a much more sort of active and flexible and live uh, way of undertaking the research. To the extent that there's a constant toing and froing between these st two stages uh, of research. And I think this has uh, not only um, possible openings for the way we do research and design, but uh, I think in many other uh, fields as well. So, Going back to that fateful moment 10 years ago, um, perhaps had we known this, we might have undertaken the research in a different way. We might have begun by engaging with this community uh, to co-produce the aims, co-produce the questions, co-produce what we were actually looking for in the research and um, co-produce how we might re represent it. And then we might have moved on to having them engaged as active citizens in producing that research alongside us. So we might have moved from a space which was perhaps antagonistic to a space that was agonistic and might have looked a bit more like this. Thank you very much. <laughs>